Alex Meadie, JoeBlow.com. Nice to meet the two of you. Hey, Hi, Alex. Joe. How are you? Pretty good. So first off, <laughs> he he amazing. <laughs> she, she's like, hey, Joe Blow. <laughs> That's not my name, but I'll take it. <laughs> um, Hi, so f- phenomenal season. Absolutely amazing journey from beginning to end. Um, was this an emotionally challenging season to put together more so than the other seasons, just because you knew that this was the final season? Oh, a hundred percent. Not only that it was the final season, but we were shooting during COVID. And so you have the emotion of, Hey, this might be the last time we get to do this. And we've spent almost eight years together at this point. We're all super close. It's like a family atmosphere, the same 90% of the same crew that we started on episode one is still with us. So there was that feeling of, of one of my favorite things about the season is the, the amount of time we get to spend together and hang out together and rehearse and, and have this creative environment. Well, now you have the last season and you really want to spend time with each other, but COVID just eliminated that. So you're in these little bubbles and you're shooting and, and you have all these precautions and to keep you separate and you just want to be with everybody. So there was, it was challenging on a lot of different levels. Numerous levels. Definitely sad it's coming into an end, but um, I'm just so grateful that I got to be just a part of it, you know? And Nadine, you came in, in in the middle. You weren't there from the very beginning. And your character has, for lack of a better way of putting it, there's a pretty intense ending for your character in this season. Were these... Was, was that something you knew was coming? Did you read the books or know ahead of time? Or was that something you got the script and it's like, oh, this is a sucker punch? Oh, no, I, I know Carlaris' storyline. And then going into book seven. So I understood. Um, and they've kept really close to the book for the storylines of, of the show. So I know. And uh, Wes, for you, for the journey that your character has been on since the very beginning is because there's... I mean, even in real life, you had these pods for you to, to film in or everybody was separated. But even on the nature of the show, you're all separate. Everybody's in distant parts of space and different planets and different locations. Was there, and this actually, either one of you could answer this, was there anybody that you did not get the chance to work with that you wish that you had had in-person, on-screen scenes with? I'm trying to remember. I don't think I had a scene with Drummer and Drummer's one of my favorite characters. And I don't think I had a chance to work with her, which would I really would have loved to do. I would have loved to work with Ashford, Sir Theron. Um, but I think, I, I think I've gotten to work with everyone else. And I will say uh, that I did speak to, to her earlier and she mentioned that Drummer and Amos would have been the interaction that would have been her number one as well. <laughs> oh, good. Excellent. That's great. And what about you, Nadine? Um, anyone but Wes. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one I worked with in season five. I know. But I expanded in season six. Got, yeah, you get to work with everybody. quite a bit with everyone. Except um, Sharae. Except Sheree. Like, that would have been fantastic. I got to hang out most of the Rossi crew. Um, but yeah, nothing with the Belters, with, with Drummer or Keon. Um, and everyone did such a phenomenal job. But yeah, all this Rada, she's. And I, and I will say that I mentioned on screen specifically because I did hear in a previous interview uh, that a little while ago that there is a pretty naughty chat, group chat that goes around. Are you all both involved with that? Mm-mm. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, <laughs> deniability. Gotta love it. <laughs> um, so obviously this is, there's more books past where this goes. So if the opportunity were to arise to do another season, continue the story for your characters, would you both be up for that? This has been um, one of the most exciting and creatively fulfilling experiences that I've had in my career. And if it continued, I absolutely would consider being going forward with it. What he said. <laughs> Um, what's, what is the hardest part about doing a show like this? I mean, from our side, watching it, the finished product on screen, there's obviously tons and tons of people involved making this look as realistic as possible, but behind the scenes, when you're actually filming it, what's the hardest thing about making a show like this? For me, uh, 
there's something about those spacesuits, especially the Canterbury suits. Uh, the only day, the only time ever working on the Expanse, when I wake up and I read the call sheet for the day and I see in spacesuits, that's the only thing I'm like, ugh. Because uh, they can't, because they, you know, after a while, those spacesuits, they, but you know what? It really works with the scenes and the characters because you really, you really are sweating that much and you really are um, uh, annoyed by those suits. It's given me such a huge appreciation for anyone in spacesuits and movies and TV now. I'm like, oh, God bless you. I don't know how you're doing. Like, it is, you don't think about these things when you're watching TV or movies. You see it and you're like, oh, that's really cool. Matt Damon's floating in space. But you don't really think what goes into wearing a spacesuit. And it is, it is like, yeah, you can have meltdowns, sauna. claustrophobic sauna. It's like you don't understand it until you're in it. <laughs> yeah. is there so there's a fan that's blowing at you to keep the the mask from fogging up yeah I mean, is is that heavy is there a weight to those suits that just makes it cumbersome to wear at all it's not backpacks for me i don't it's not really heavy it's it's made out of a seven ply wetsuit and then and so everything is sealed off and that and then that you're locked into that helmet and it's just the sauna aspect of it you know just the heat in there and then you know, doing stunts and running and climbing and doing things or whatever. And then over time, as you're shooting for a whole season, it just starts to, you just start like, I don't, I don't want to put this. You have to be pounding water because you are sweating the entire time. Like you get a break and we'll come out and we'll take those suits down halfway. And then you're just like, wet like you jumped in a pool and, so it, and it's zero below outside. <laughs> so, oh, man. You're, so you're walking out and it's like freezing, but I will say, um, we're probably all healthy from getting all that. Oh yeah, that was great. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to drink lots of water. Uh, Nadine, for you, this, your character has, you're like put through the emotional ringer on this show. Like your character does not have it, an easy time of it. Where, where do you draw that from to, to play that? Cause it just feels like it would be devastating as soon as you stop rolling to just having gone through all that. How do you get through playing a character that has all this stuff that they have to go through? Yeah, Clarissa is more of like the, the personal humanized drama, right? It's more like on a personal level. It's not this mm-hmm. huge epic sociopolitical thing. Um, but as an actor, I mean, you're pulling from all these different associations and resources, uh, but the basic need to be loved by your parents, like we can all relate to that in different ways and the ways that that shows up in our lives and our behaviors and our adult relationships. We all have some things to work on in those areas. And so, I mean, though, as Nadine, those things are kind of easy for me to look at and Chris and be like, oh, I understand that darkness. Oh, I, I understand where she's coming from. Not that I would ever be moved to the level that Clarissa was for her desperation. Um, but I, yeah, I think it's as an actor, you're always, you have to be open and willing to go to, to understand and dive and, and feel those places. And that's, that's what we're, we're trained and paid to do. So <laughs> Well, a lot of people will dismiss shows off the bat if it's a genre. Some people say, oh, it's a horror movie. I don't watch horror movies. Or it's a romantic comedy. I don't watch those. This is something that if you watch the trailer, you hear anything about it, people describe it as science fiction. And a lot of people will probably not give it a chance because it is science fiction. What would you say to those people that they're, what are they missing out on in this show? Because it is more than just sci-fi. Well, I mean, look, whatever, whatever they like, you, you know, you would say, why do you like the things that you like? And it's probably has to do with the humanity of the characters and how the characters change throughout the story and where they feel like they're learning something and they get a sense of catharsis from going through what that character goes through. And that is the core of any good story. And so the genre is really just scaffolding on the foundation of that. And so what I think the Expanse strength is, is the humanity and the story of these people uh, really going through and and suffering and loving and 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 changing and experiencing things and how that changes them and they gain wisdom and so um, the reality is that the expanse is a great story firing on all cylinders with the sci-fi genre on top of it and so if they like story which they do of any kind those are the things that they have in common 
And I, I think that the the journey that these characters have all gone on from season one to season six, it's never been just one thing. It's never been that, oh, we're just going to make an action story or we're just going to do a political drama. It's encompassed all of those genres. Like you said, it's all there. It just happens to be set in the future with a lot of things in space. Um, on the scenes that a lot of you have where you're within these ships, these, these vehicles and you're in space, you've got to spout a lot of technological jargon. You've got to say things that are either based in, in real science or engineering, or you're saying something that's completely made up. Some characters have to say it in a unique accent. How do you keep these characters grounded when you know you're saying something that potentially could be just complete nonsense to somebody? Well, like if you were explaining me how, if, 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 if you were explaining to a guy from the 1950s how to sign on to the internet, uh, he probably like Wi-Fi code, password, type in that. He, he, would, he wouldn't understand it. So what you do is you take the new technology or this fictitious technology and you familiarize yourself with it. That is it as common as explaining how to crank up your car um, because that is what it is for them. And so, you know, you process it and work it and understand what it's saying, understand the thing to the point where it's just here's how you crank up the car. You put the key in the ignition, you turn it. And, you know, the the, uh, the combustion happens and the gas and the light. And that's a practical thing. And people, you know, if they're if they were from the uh, the, the 1700s and you tell them how to do the car, they'd be like, wait, what? It sounds foreign, but you have to familiarize them and ground yourself in it to it's really practical and makes sense. And I, a question back, Nadine, for you, I, I've been asking everybody, it feels like on this show, the two identifiable characteristics that you can really notice from people are either the tattoos or a lot of the characters have really amazing facial hair. <laughs> Who would you say on this show has the best facial hair? Has the best facial hair. It's not between you and Keon. You guys both got good beards. I would say Keon has really the, yeah. I mean you're not yeah. look at this line. But this there. this is this it's is full. not Amos though. I think Keon oh, really? definitely has the best on the expanse. Hair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're we're mutually voting Keon. Keon. <laughs> I told him I told him that he does. He has the best facial hair. It's a character <laughs> unto itself. Um, and he he went on quite a while about how he had so much investment in making his character have that <laughs> that facial hair. Um, but yeah, it's it's the phenomenal show. You're both great on it. It was a pleasure talking to you, and I hope everybody really gets to see this journey come to an end. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Nice meeting you. You too. Bye.